Capricorn, it's me, Stormy, and here's your 2018 yearly horoscope. So before we jump in and get to the good good, the 2018 birthday appointments are up. You can click in the description box down below, book your appointment, you book it by your sun sign, okay? And then we will see each other, we'll chat it out, catch up, make sure you're on par, go through any issues you may be having, whatever we need to cover at that time, we will, but click in the description box down below, scoop that appointment up before they're gone, okay? All right, Capricorn. So I actually love this year for you because with Saturn coming on home, being in Capricorn, a ruling sign for that energy, you're very comfortable typically working with the weight of Saturn because it doesn't feel overly stressful to you. So I actually love this year for you. I really do. The way that you will get to spiritually grow and mature this year is going to be absurd to you. I actually feel like this may be the year where you're like, wow, I am extra, extra capable. And over the span of this Saturn in Capricorn, which is approximately three years, you, I think, come to the table as just such a different person. So let's talk about that for a minute. Now, one of the things I think is really significant about this Saturn being in your sign is that you may take on this year so much more responsibility. And as a Capricorn, you may be going, how could I be any more responsible or take on it anymore? But this is the thing. I don't think that you even tip your nose to the responsibilities that come your way or um, the duties or the obligations that come your way. I think that you naturally just step into them this year. It requires a lot more selflessness than maybe you're comfortable with, and that will definitely be something you will grow with over the next three years, especially this year, because it's this first tap in of the Saturn transit. But ultimately, I think you step into these new responsibilities um, very easily. And that's something I do think that happens is that you get a lot of new responsibilities, new things come to the table and you're expected to show up. Now, one of the things I want to just make you mindful of, and I really, really mean this, is that this year and over the next three years, but specifically this year, don't let people's expectations of you make you feel any less or put you in a position where you can't thrive. And that's the lesson, right? You may, you may take on all of these responsibilities. You are out there killing the game, doing what you need to do. And people are expecting more and more and more from you. The more and more people expect, the less and less you will be able to deliver, right? Like you can't do that much extra duty. So if they need to expect, let them. Do not let their expectations cash your hiney. You just do what you need to do. But this is ultimately a year where you are about to show your responsibility, your steadiness, your dependability. And people, I think, will naturally be drawn to that. And thank goodness they're going to be drawn also because Jupiter steps in to help. Jupiter's in Scorpio, reigning through your 11th house, bringing new people to you, right? Jupiter's bringing abundance, opportunity, wisdom, blessings. He's bringing people to you. And these people may be showing up because they're like, man, Capricorn has got their tacos in a row and I need to learn a little about how to do that. At the same time, they could be showing up in the form of dependable, honest, spiritual, blessed friendships coming into your life. What do you like to just be surrounded um, by people who have your back that are definitely team Capricorn, you could see that coming in and then you're stepping up in the zone of responsibility as to how to be this kind of a friend. You know what I'm saying? In fact, with Jupiter in the 11th house, I do feel like um, this is a year where you could be drawing somebody into your life who's very, very significant in helping you get something done, a friendship or a networking group or something like that. But they become kind of a um, just a very important piece of you getting a project done later in the year. So really significant energy happening in this energy for you. Now, Jupiter is going to move on to Sagittarius, but that'll be as we get to the end of the year, moving into your 12th house zone. So you'll start to work on some things behind the scenes, but we'll talk about that as we get closer. But I do feel like it's important to understand, I can't say it enough, don't let anybody else's expectations make you crazy, okay? Now, we have also got Uranus moving into the sign of Taurus. So while you're under this kind of heavier, but you're able to work with the energy of Saturn being in your sign, on your sign, refining you, reshaping you, 
blowing the dust off of some of these rough edges that you've got, Uranus actually, when it steps into Taurus, is going to step into your fifth house zone. So this is romance. Yes. Hi. This is love. This is play. This is your joy house, right? If you haven't really been playing and cultivating this area of your life, um, Uranus is going to come and Uranus is like, boom, I'm here. He's electric. He moves like this. He stimulates our brains. He stimulates our intuition, right? He, he breaks down the structures of where he comes by. So from May until November, Uranus is going to be visiting the fifth house area of your chart, right? So we get this sample, this taste, this little flavor of what Uranus is going to do when he comes back to this area of your chart in 2019. But for now, with Uranus here in the fifth house zone, yes, this could be something different around children, um, you may be coming up with creative ideas because if you've been struggling with a child, you may just need some creative ideas. You may need the intuition to understand that maybe that child needs a little bit more freedom in order to grow, right? Now, Uranus and Taurus is also in fall. So I think there will be some areas of your life around children and projects and things like that that you say, I need to let this fall in order for it to grow, in order for us to grow, in order for there to be serenity, right? But in the romantic zone, I do feel like if you're single, Uranus is infamous for suddenly bringing something into your life, right? <laughs> it's also infamous for suddenly bringing something out of your life. So if you've been in a trash water relationship, this may be a time where you're ready to let that go. If you've been so single, that it's like you feel like you're in the dictionary under single, like if your sex life is like, what is that? This could be a time where you actually get a bump to it. You know what I mean? How exciting, but it will also mean you have to get out and get social. If you've been coupled up, you may be wanting some new experiences in your relationship zone because in the fifth house, we do sex. We do. that. This is a sex house, okay? Don't think that it's not. It's play, it's joy, but it's sex and it's fun. And Uranus is kind of a kinky energy. Maybe you're wanting to try a little something and have fun. Explore your sexuality with your partner, right? Explore your sexuality for yourself. There is creativity. There is abundance there. You have Saturn in your sign. You're going to need all of the help that you can get, right? <laughs> so enjoy the exploration. Enjoy freedom. Enjoy innovation. Enjoy um, maybe re-looking at with Uranus here, even in this small little taste that you're going to get of it, enjoy re-looking at your long range goals. Do they need a bump up? Do they need a different perspective, right? You've become and are becoming a different person. That means the long range goals have to change. They've got to come current. They got to level up, right? <laughs> now we've also got some retrogrades happening this year. Mars is going to be going retrograde as well as Venus. Now when Mars is retrograde between June and August, what happens when Mars is retrograde is of course we retrograde, we re, re-look at, reconsider, rethink, revise, and this is all about action, energy, and desire. Where are you putting your energy? What are your desires? How do those things need to be adjusted? Where are you showing up in your life, Capricorn? Where are you not showing up in your life? And this is gonna be really interesting because it's in your second house, so this is around some finances. Where are you in your finances? They may need a re-looking at. But for you, because Saturn is also in your sign, one of the things I think, Capricorn, this becomes an action of looking at is your value. Are you living your value? Are you sharing your talents out there in the world? Yes, you could be re-looking at money and things like that, but I really think that this is a value self-esteem kind of deal. Now with Venus going retrograde, she's going to start out her retrograde from October to November. Going to start off in Scorpio, so up here with Jupiter, right? In the 11th house. So when, when Venus is retrograde, relationships get tight. Finances can get tight because they come under review about the harmony that is or is not there, the beauty that is or is not there. So in your relationship zone, don't be surprised if you and a friend kind of have a get into it or you're reevaluating a friendship or something like that. Just because it's under evaluation doesn't mean that it needs to go. It means that it maybe needs to be adjusted to bring a level of harmony. It may also be a time where a friend or a social group or something like that says, hey, you're not really showing up and you got to reevaluate that in some way, shape or form. But then that Venus retrograde is going to slide back into Libra into your career zone. So you'll get to relook at, you know, is it time to look at your branding? Do you Need to re-beautify your business in some way, shape, or form? Do you need to bring a different level of harmony? Do you need to bring forward a talent in your business that you haven't been sharing? I also think in this 11th house, when it's retrograde in Scorpio, you may have a talent that you've been waiting to bring to the table, and now you, you present it to the friendship group or to a group, and you actually get the support you need. It's a wonderful time to find a tribe. Then as we get ready to close out this year, we're going to actually have Jupiter making that move 
into Sagittarius. So that's going to be a wonderful energy for you to kind of breathe in and start to work with because it's going to be in that 12th house zone. So it'll be development. You will develop things in this 12th house space, maybe working on a psychic gift, maybe a spiritual awakening happens for you, something like that towards the end of the year. Now, in between there, we've also got eclipses that we're going to deal with. The eclipse are going to look like the ones of 2017, being that they are in both Leo and Aquarian energies, right? But this is actually connected to a cycle that started back in 2016. So you're going to want to look at what were you working on? What were you manifesting? What were you moving towards in 2016? And see where you're at here in 2018 as they happen. All right, Caps, let's jump in and break this year down by date. At the beginning of the year, January 31st, we've got a lunar eclipse, a total lunar eclipse happening in the sign of Leo in your eighth house. And it's important to understand that it's a total because it's blotting out your emotions. So it resets them, basically. So things regarding partnership, right? Um, joint resources, joint finances, your partner's money, the way that you get money in ways that you didn't pay for it, intimacy, you'll be getting a resetting here, right? And this is your full moon at this time, so it says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. February 15th, we've got a solar eclipse happening in the sign of Aquarius, so this is your second house. New opportunities for income right? New opportunities to put a talent out there and make money with it, right? New opportunities to let your value be seen out in the world. Your self-esteem is changing. Bring some harmony to your life. This is a wonderful new moon to plant those seeds of intention for brand new beginnings. May 15th, we experience Uranus moving into Taurus, right? We have it there all the way until November. Then it's going to slide back into Aries. And then in 2019, it'll come back forward into Taurus and we'll be here for about seven years. So this is all in the fifth house zone. So play, enjoy it, get some new ideas around joy, around your kids, around investments, around your creative expression. Put that ish out there, okay? June 26th to uh, August 27th, we've got that Mars retrograde. Now, I do suggest during a Mars retrograde, if you can avoid elective surgical procedures, that's for the very best. And that's because Mars is over war-like things and cutting, the surgeon cutting you, that is an act of war, okay? So if you can avoid that, just... Just wait. If you can't, trust your gut, trust your higher power, and move forward. As we get to July 13th, we've got another solar eclipse, but this one is in Cancer. So this is in your relationship zone, and I love this. This is a new beginning around relationships. This gives a beautiful bump to relationships of all kind, personal relationships, friendships, and business relationships. July 27th, we have got a lunar eclipse happening in Aquarius. So again, something could be ending in terms of your um finances in 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 terms of your self-esteem right maybe that caca self-esteem has fallen off at this particular point right how beautiful would that be to move forward a little bit more free but it is again a full moon so at this time around your second house something will need to be ended acknowledged or adjusted as we get to August 11th we have the solar eclipse happening in Leo so again in your eighth house a bump from sources that you're jointly connected to, but maybe you didn't actually earn that money or that income, but you have the opportunity to have influx of funds and intimacy come into your world. October 5th through November 6th is when we're going to see that Venus retrograde starting off in Scorpio over here in the 11th house, then into Libra in the 10th house, reevaluating those relationships, harmony, disharmony, what are you bringing to the table financially, what are you bringing to the table in your career, is there something you need to be doing different, is there a relationship you need to be doing differently around your career, does somebody have their hands in your career and they need to not, you may be reevaluating that as well. And as we get to November 8th, Jupiter makes that move going home into a comfortable sign of Sagittarius, into a 12th house space for you. You will spend the next year to 13 months evaluating things in this 12th house space, getting your psychic life together, having a spiritual awakening around maybe the life and the experiences that you've had this year because you will be shown some different things this year that I think you get to take with you into this quiet place at the end of the year, reevaluate, shed some fears, gain some closure, and all ultimately have this creative, beautiful, spiritual piece of yourself really awaken over the next 13 months. All right, Capricorn, I look forward to walking through every week and every month of with you in 2018, guiding you in any way I can. Click and grab your 2018 birthday appointments. And of course, you know how to YouTube. Like this video, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you soon. Bye!